at around two o'clock this afternoon, this emergency situation unfolded in Sydney's CBD. A man armed with a knife has stabbed a woman. Uh, we are told there were a number of other stabbing attempts, but only the one person was injured in this attack. It is then that a man took off. He has been pursued initially by witnesses. Members of the public gave chase. You can see them there running down Clarence Street, I believe, until he turned into a side thoroughfare and was then taken down. Initially, by members of the public, we're told uh, for two brothers. We're also being told a employee of the Commonwealth Bank brought him down, pinned him beneath a chair until police could arrive, and there you see them making the arrest. The man has certainly been taken into custody. The good news, we are told, the woman who was stabbed is now in a stable condition in hospital, and no doubt police are interviewing this fella in Sydney CBD this afternoon as they try to unravel how and why this situation unfolded. Let's go to our senior cameraman now, Paul Walker. Paul was on the scene with Andrew Denny as this unfolded, and he brought you many of those pictures that you've been watching over the last hour or so. Paul, how did this start from your position at around 2 o'clock this afternoon? Oh, wow, Fergo, hearing you go through that, it brings back a lot of memories already. Um, we were just driving back to the station, back through the, the middle of the city, and uh, we were just stuck in traffic, as you normally would be. And, uh, and suddenly, like a big, great movie, I could see all these people just uh, uh, turn their heads around on the sidewalk and look behind them, and then turn around and start running towards us. And, uh, and we were thinking, what's going on? And then suddenly this guy with a balaclava on starts running, running past us, and he has a, a bloody knife in his hand, and he just sprints past us. And, uh, and uh, Denny and I just, Andrew, Denny and I just look at each other and then we just jump out of the car. And, uh, and I just grab, go to the boot and grab out my camera and just start filming this guy. He jumps onto the roof of a car and, uh, and, then, uh, and then he starts yelling out. What I thought was Ali Akbar, he was yelling out and then jumped off the roof of the car. And then from behind me, a couple of fireys who had grabbed um, axes from their truck. And then we're yelling at him, just yelling at him to put the weapon down, put it down, put it down. And he just kept backing up. And, uh, and I just thought, what, what's going to happen here? We just had no idea what's going to happen. And then, uh, and then he just started backing up and started running. And then a couple of other people started running with us. And then we all started running and thinking, where's this going to go? And then the, uh, the fireys and other people were yelling out to anybody who was near him to get, get away. He's got a knife and he'll kill you. And we just didn't know what was going to happen from there. We, um, we, then, we then, I think it was about two city blocks we ran down and, uh, and then we turned right into Wynyard, I think it's, uh, yeah, Wynyard Street. And then he ran down to the bottom of the street and the, um, the guy who I believe was a Westpac worker, actually, he uh, had a chair with him and uh, he used that chair. And when, he w and when the guy wasn't looking, he, um, he hit him on the back of the head, which knocked him to the ground. And then, and then a, a whole bunch of people just jumped on him. They, uh, they, they grabbed the knife, they pushed the knife away from him. They found some, um, some what looked like medication that was on the ground that they found as well. Uh, and, then, and then people were yelling and screaming, there were sirens and... Um, uh, and the, and the, but the guy was just compliant. He just laid on the ground. He didn't do anything. He's, but people were screaming at him. This one guy was wanting to kill him, and the fireys were trying to hold him back and said, no, 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 wait for the police, wait for the police. And, uh, and that's what we had to do. And it, took, it felt like forever, but it took about five minutes before the first police arrived, and, and they quickly um, searched him and checked him and, um, and grabbed the weapons, and, uh, and they threw him into the pack of a paddy wagon. And, uh, and they took him away, and, um, and I got uh, shots of him inside the van. So he, yeah, once again, he was yelling out Ali Akbar right to me. And um, I just can't believe that I'm in uh, the middle of the city that this would have happened, Fergo. Yeah, it is absolutely unbelievable. Paul, thank you. We've uh, seen plenty of your pictures uh, on the streets of Sydney this afternoon. I believe we've got uh, some new pictures coming into the newsroom now. Um, this is a shot of uh, the alleged uh, offender being loaded into the back of an ambulance, uh, no doubt being taken for a uh, medical checkup uh, as part of the uh, ongoing police investigation. Paul, as you got out of the car, as all this was unfolding and as this chase made its way down through Clarence Street and then turned and was starting to head towards Martin Place, did it feel to you that it was getting more out of control or as more and more members of the public and 
uh, emergency service workers joined in, they were starting to gain some sort of control before this approached George Street. No, not really. It was it was a, a core amount of about three fireys and about four other people. Um, most of the people, I think it's one of those things, you see something like this in the middle of the city and I think most people think that it's not real or it's it's not happening. It happened to be that York Street, for that particular, I mean, I'm looking at York Street now and it's full of traffic, but for that, for that few minutes it was empty, there was no traffic, there was hardly any, luckily there was hardly any pedestrians there. Uh, there was, uh, they were just, people would, were just trying to crowd him, they were trying to work out a way to, to get an area where, where he couldn't uh, move, and, uh, but he kept moving backwards and, and I think everyone was just trying to work out where he was going or what he was going to do next and that, and that was, the, I think that was the problem but trying to work out what he was going to do. And uh, like I said, it took a long. It, took, it felt like a long while for the police to get there, but but when they did, it was just amazing how things uh, do take over very quickly. And the, a sergeant who turned up first, he basically said to me, he had about, he had about five other uh, officers with him, and he basically said, "You, you, you, bang, bang, bang," and they uh, they basically strip searched this guy, and they turned him over. They looked for weapons. They another officer um, secured the um, the bloody knife that was only only about a meter away from him. They found, like I said, some other um, pills that they. That they'd found in his pocket as well. They grabbed those, and then before I knew it, there was just sirens and and, and police cars uh, everywhere. And but very quickly, they actually rounded him up. They they basically picked him up and carried him towards the um, police van, and um, and put him in the police van before anything was happening. I think they just wanted to get him away from the scene because they didn't know what was happening. And they and I think the police thought to get him away was a, was their best way of trying to contain the situation. There was also there were quite a lot of witnesses around, and for the police trying to get witnesses. And and trying to understand what had happened, uh, I think they were they were very much confused, as you would be. Uh, you had to see it firsthand to know exactly. It was something that you, as I said to you, it looked like a B-grade movie, to, uh, a horror movie, or a, or a, um, um, a movie to see it to begin with before we knew exactly it happened. Yeah, it is uh, quite incredible. Uh, I've got to say, I think one of the bravest uh, people I've seen so far in all this vision coming in is the gentleman with the snowy hair, with the jumper, with the chair. He was first on the scene uh, quite a, a bit of time before those fire brigade officers arrived, and he was the one, just he and the man with the knife, facing each other and, and standing on what was becoming a very lonely street. You've got to take your hat off to that gentleman who stood his ground and yeah, that, partly the corralled him down Fergo, the street. That's the guy in the black suit. No, it's a gentleman, uh, looks like a, a businessman, he's wearing a jumper and slacks uh, and uh, he is there right. well and truly before the fire brigade officers are there and I guess you uh, also, yep. you grab your camera, you switch into work mode, you put uh, one eye uh, down that viewfinder um, and uh, you might not have been aware of just um, that the members of the public were, were right alongside you as that was unfolding. Yeah, we, we, I mean, I, I, like everybody else, start yelling at him and he looks at me at the beginning and says, who are you? And I say, I'm from Channel 7. And he just, he yells something like, um, like, um, um, so what, or I don't know, or something like that. And, and, I, and I'm thinking, my camera, maybe I can distract him, maybe I can get his attention, maybe I could slow him up. So, because of the fact that he was, um, he was moving, he was like he was on meds or something, he was just moving around and trying to work out a way to stop him so that I suppose the cavalry could come and, um, and somehow contain him.